Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vani Khare, and on the behalf of Festi Poetry Festival, I welcome all of us to celebrate the resurgence of sacred and beautiful feminine. It feels so great to be here with all of you in person. Finally, the excitement is undeniable. And at the same time, I welcome all the viewers who are watching us online today. This year's theme is resurgence on the way. and the poet of indian women association iwa and social change movement sanrakshan will spin the verse to decode the messages of challenging trek and panoramic train that have shaped their becoming so i hope you all are excited for the journey and let's give a big round of applause to all the poets and encourage them with a loud cheer let me introduce to you with the first poet of the evening our first poet is from indian women association iwa her name is rakhi shankar she has degree in engineering business administration and public administration she has worked in the software finance and public policy field she is currently a stay home mom and a volunteer guide with national museum of singapore a poet at heart This is her second time returning to our festival. Rakhi will also give a brief introduction about Indian Women Association before reading her poem. So let's welcome Rakhi Shankar. Big round of applause. I would like to thank the Poetry Festival of Singapore for this uh, platform providing this platform to present my poem here today. I would also like to thank the Indian Women's Association for this opportunity. The Indian Women's Association or IWA was founded as a society in 1998. Its purpose is to connect the expat and local Indian community and to help them integrate with the larger community in Singapore. IWA members volunteer and participate in community outreach events with government and social welfare organizations in Singapore. IWA raises funds through its activities and it has been regularly making financial and in-kind contributions to support the migrant workers, the elderly and the less privileged in Singapore. It also provides scholarships to needy students at two of the universities here. IWA has various interest groups which organize social and cultural activities. One of the interest groups is the writing enthusiast group and uh, which is for members who are interested in writing and it is thanks to this group that I am able to present my poem here today. My poem is titled Revival. The last two years have been a challenge for all of us. The pandemic has given us a new perspective on the small everyday joys that we took for granted before covid now the pandemic is almost over and my poem is about shedding the restrictive practices that we had adopted during this time and emerging from the covid crisis to reclaim the lost joys and freedoms revival two years of isolation and hibernation out of the shadows of fear i emerge to reclaim my life the mask armor now retired once again smiles we reveal elbow and fist bumps give way once again hugs we feel not two or five or eight once again all together for movies and dinner we gather six feet no longer separate us once again there is capacity to connect and be a community tracking tracing quarantine now history once again i am at liberty out of the shadows of fear i emerge revived eager and free thank you for your time back to you vani stay stay lucky stay lucky Thank you Rakhi. I'm sure you have resonated with all who have with all the hearts here 
and viewers watching us online as you captured our collective resurgence together throughout the pandemic. As a poet, what went into creating this beautiful piece? Well, part of it was because of our association with the Poetry Festival and our interest group, like I said, the Writing Enthusiast Group. And this topic, resurgence, is really about us coming out from the uh, COVID pandemic. And that sort of, I think, resonates with everybody who has gone through this period. And uh, I wanted to take, you try writing something about it. Thank you, Rakhi. It was a beautiful poem. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for Rakhi. And now it's time for some long distance love. Yes, the charm of Poetry Festival is such that three of our poets couldn't resist spinning their poem even from far away and will be performing remotely today. So if you guys are ready for some long distance love, here we go. The first poet is Hello. Neeti Gupta. Let's welcome Neeti Gupta from IWA. Neeti is a counseling psychologist and a mental health activist. She firmly believes in the power of creativity, communication and connection in personal growth and healing. Since a very young age, Neeti has found solace and inspiration in poetry. Her poem and proses on mental health issues are well read and circulated on social media. Let's give a round of applause to this woman who has been adding so much healing to the world through her efforts. Hello everyone, my name is Neeti Gupta and I'm a member of the Indian Women's Association and their Writing Enthusiast Club. I recently joined IWA and it was through them I came to know of this wonderful initiative that gives amateur poets like me a platform to express our thoughts. So thank you, the Poetry Festival of Singapore and the Indian Women's Association for this brilliant opportunity. My poem titled Rebirth is a poem about my experiences with the COVID pandemic and how I think it affected all of us as a community in Singapore. Although confusing, scary and difficult, the pandemic also gave us, an, gave us all an opportunity to develop new perspectives and grow stronger and more close. These are the same ideas which I have explored using the concept of birth and specifically rebirth as a frame. The poem also has a few lines in my mother tongue, Hindi. I hope you enjoy listening to it as much as I enjoyed writing it. Rebirth. From my mother's womb, I was birthed at the start, but here I am born again, this time from my heart. My heart went through labor it endured terrible pain. It went through a metamorphosis. I shall never be the same again. Stage one, contractions. Something was stirring. Something was strange. Orient was in a frenzy. The heart, my heart started to change. It went into a panic, but tried to hold still. It isolated at home and got on with the drill. Stage two, Descent. The heart was in agony. Things were out of control. Untimely death became a normal. We were grieving as a whole. And then it became numb. Didn't have the energy to care. Eventually though, hope showed its head and answered all its prayers. Stage three, birth. I came out alive and kicking. I came out humbled yet strong. I came out wiser and thus calmer. I came out knowing I belong. The heart was filled with gratitude. It was kinder than ever before. It said, resurgence is courageous. So do more, be more and love more. Phir beh chalti hai zindagi, himmat se kar kaam le. Zyada kare, zyada bane, aur pyaar ko anjaam de. Resurgence is courageous. So do more, be more, and love more. Thank you again for this opportunity and your time. What a beautiful thought. Resurgence is courageous. So do more, be more, and love more. Thanks, Neeti, for this grounding message. Wish 
we were here to interact more. Let's give a loud cheer to Neeti so we make sure that wherever in the world she is, she hears it. Come on, guys. Our next poet from IWA is also reading remotely for us today. Her name is Aruna Sahani, a medical doctor by profession. Aruna has been writing since childhood, short stories and poems on relationships, social issues, and nature. Her poem has been published as Anthology in Revere in 2016, and her solo poetry book, Mid-Autumn Musing, was launched at Singapore Writers' Festival in 2018. She's yet another returning poet to PFS, and she's also an artist who, whose work has been published and exhibited in many shows. A woman in science with a heart of an artist, let's welcome Aruna with loud cheer. Good, good, good evening, everybody. At the outset, I'd like to thank Poetry Festival Singapore and Indian Women's Association for giving me this platform. My name is Aruna Shahani and I am a member of the Writers Enthusiast Club of Indian Women's Association. and the collective effort of all of humanity is trying to copy good evening. good evening everybody at the outset i'd like to thank poetry festival singapore and indian women's association for giving me this platform my name is aruna shahani and i am a member of the writers enthusiast club of Indian Women's Association. My poem is about the challenges faced by humanity during the COVID-19 pandemic and how the resilience and the collective effort of all of humanity is trying to conquer this grave global problem. I'll be reciting a few lines of my poem in Hindi, my mother tongue. Resurgence, COVID-19 pandemic. A dark dream had come true, it seemed. An invisible enemy wriggled through our world like a snake, molting and leaving behind its skin, moving ahead in newer shades, its venomous fangs searching for the next inexperienced prey. Soon, its big mouth devoured stock markets, airlines, economies, jobs, health, lives of young and old, and people's morale. Petrified populace stayed imprisoned at home. Behind their gizmos, they did hide. Weary of the sting of the enemy, looming everywhere outside. But its treacherous, speedy demeanor advanced at great pace as if determined to wipe out the human race. While millions across the globe perished to its poison, the snake charmers in white coats struggled to tame it with all their weapons. But many themselves succumbed to the enemy's lethal venom. Veining oxygen in lungs and cylinders was a big challenge. Yet, humanity was at its peak performance. Jeevan hume kai baar torta hai. Par jaha jaha hum tootte hai, vaha vaha. हम और मजबूत उभरते हैं। सदियों से जीवन और ऊपर वाले का यही करिश्मा है। Life often breaks us, but leaves us stronger at the broken place. That has remained the magic of time 
and Almighty's grace. The lofty industrial giants made history by holding hands. Technology, at record-breaking pace, churned out anti-venoms of various brands. The unstoppable human mind remodeled our ways of living. We loved and cared like never before, found new ways of doing things. Now, the skies are once again bustling with flights. Festivals and meetings in flesh refill color in our lives. Schools and playgrounds are bubbling with frolicking kids. Offices are buzzing with fresh energy and warm smiles. Carefree crowds throng restaurants, theatres and malls as if nothing ever happened at all. This is fruit of unremitting resilience of people in mass for years that choked and the grit and sweat of healers who toiled in heavy robes. With the miracle of invincible human spirit and the expansive human mind, a bold promise shines for the future of mankind. Together, we can overcome anything and everything. Together, we can change our collective destiny. No matter how dark the night or how strong the enemy. Thank you very much. Indeed, the pandemic has been tough to all of us. But this has also made us more resilient collectively. Thank you, Arna, for your thought-provoking piece. And now it's time for next poet from IWA, also remote. And I'm wondering, a lot of you might have been in long distance relationships. They are glitchy and they can be difficult. So if any technical difficulty happens, please be patient with us. Manisha Ninjavan is a real estate consultant in Hutton, Asia and has been in the industry for 10 years. She enjoys meeting people and finding their dream home. Manisha completed her postgraduate in public health research and psychology. She has co-authored publications on chronic diseases in Australia. I mean, seriously, how talented our poets are today. So this is a time for Manisha. Give her a big round of applause. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a member of the Indian Women's Association of Singapore and the Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a member of the Indian Women's Association of Singapore and the Writers Enthusiast Club. My name is Manisha Anujawan. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today at the Poetry Festival of Singapore. Thank you to the organizers and to the Indian Women's Association for giving us a platform to participate in this wonderful event. My poem is Unquenchable Thirst. So a little bit about this poem. It was written during the COVID-19 pandemic. It discusses the strength and the resilience and solidarity of many women around the world, experiencing absolute chaos in their homes during lockdowns. Once the schools and offices were closed, each day was filled with absolute chaos in the homes, fear, uncertainty, and a constantly thirsty urn to be filled each day. The challenges and pressure on women especially to perform a juggling act between their work and family life was just non-stop activity. In the spirit of the community, we persevered and chalked a path through the painful and the precious moments. My poem, Unquenchable Thirst. You keep filling the urn with water. Sometimes it's physically exhausting. Sometimes it's emotionally draining. 
Sometimes it's mental torture. Sometimes you seek spiritual guidance. Somehow, the urn's thirst is never quenched. The urn becomes empty the next day. Every day you need to fill the urn. How do you keep the urn fulfilled? Sometimes you feel like throwing it on the floor, smashing it into a thousand pieces. But you just keep pouring each day, knowing it'll never be satisfied. However, enjoying the moments when the urn is full. The urn is perpetually thirsty. Life is a strange journey, taking you to places you never dreamed. People come and people go. Why do they enter your life? Why do they leave? Are they angels guiding you for the moment? Kindred spirits to assist you with your journey. They leave an empty space when they are gone. But then another soul enters your life, not able to take their place, but guide you on your new journey. God has many plans for you. Rejoice your small achievements. Relish in life's funny moments. Each day is a gift. Treasure it. And keep filling the earth. Thank you. Manisha has raised a very important point, which has not been spoken about. It's about those women who have been burdened with housework, the work outside, with no help during the COVID. It's about time. We should be grateful for that effort and we should be talking about it. It's all because of the unbalanced gender role. So it also calls for a balanced gender role. Let's give a big round of applause to Manisha for bringing this out through her poem and all the women who have persevered COVID and made their houses home for everybody. All right. Now it is time for some live action. I know all of us have been waiting with the bated breath for our poets to perform today. Next up from IWA is Priya Aditya. After a fruitful career as a power plant engineering manager in India, I mean, how talented, guys. Priya has donned different hats. After her family moved to Singapore, she is trained in classical music and is environmental enthusiast. She teaches underprivileged children and has been the editor at the Indian Women Association. Let's welcome this woman with a very compassionate heart, Thank you so much, Priya. And Priya is also a practicing life coach. Thank you so much, Priya. Thank you for that introduction, Vani. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, IWA. And thank you, PFS, for having me here. So my poem tonight is about lifestyles and tribulations during COVID and the aftermath of COVID. It also speaks about the good things and hope even during trying times. This too shall pass, Mami Ji. We were to come see you, Mami, right then in the summer of 2020. Pandemic, don't come, stay safe, you said. Reluctantly, we pushed forward our travel date. Anxious, we waited for a change in fate. Then the lockdown befell everywhere. We are in shackles. What's happening? We stare. Hey, look, the food shelves are bare. We darted to the fair price store. Pile up, queue up, hold, hold, hold. The leader of the nation pleaded, don't, there's ample food. We heeded. Endeavoured to make the most of it, tried to see the positive bit. The foliage is a wee bit greener, the air a little cleaner. Why, even a python by the river, sprawled out in bliss, in languor. The birds boldly roost, hey, a toucan, no, a hornbill. They are free, we are caged, maybe nature's will. School from home. Work from home, stay at home. Thank God it's at least safe at home. Mamiji, it's festival time. 
but no color, no dazzling light. Few guests, but safety felt right. Months flew, years passed. How long can bad times last? The skies finally opened up, things started looking up. We planned to meet you, Mamiji, this June, but the pandemic took its toll on you. Tell me, why did you have to depart so soon? With your fond memories, we shall heal. We shall spread your loving words. Be kind to the animals, to the birds. We need to go on without you. This pain too shall pass, I'm sure. Thank you for listening. Many of us have lost our loved ones, like Priya. And I'm sure we all stand in solidarity with you and pray for the peace of the souls we lost and resilience of the families. Would you like to share one sweet memory of your mummyji so we can all cherish her with you here? She loved kids and the kids loved her back. You know, so beautiful. She was a tutor till the last uh, day of her life. She was been teaching. She has been. Uh, she was teaching uh, kids all her life, and they loved her. Yeah. Thank you so much. We don't give importance to our teachers, but who we are is actually because of our teachers. So, big round of applause to Priya and also to our teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mani. Thank you, Priya. Next up is Alka Balen. Alka has a master's in business administration. She has been an educator with a short stint in the corporate world. In the corporate world, Alka is one of the shortlisted winner of Poetry Festival Kathasis in 2021, and has received Wordsmith Award appreciation from Asian Literary Society of Poetry. Her poems are short, her poems and short stories have appeared in Usava Literary Review, Kitab dot org, AIS Sphere, and the Poet Mag. Brahmanand and Redomania. She chairs the Writing Enthusiast Club of Indian Women Association and is also the chapter head of Singapore's Asian Literary Society India. She has exhibited her artwork with prominent art galleries in Singapore. A very talented, a very hardworking woman. Let's welcome Alka Valen. Thank you, Vani, for the lovely intro. I am grateful for the opportunity given by the Poetry Festival of Singapore and the Indian Women's Association. My poem is titled Pushpanjali, means an offering of flowers. It speaks about a new dawn in the inner and outer world as the locks of pandemic loosen. Their hold. My poem is in English, with a few lines interspersed in Hindi, my mother tongue, as a mark of intercultural amalgamation in literature. Pushpanjali, an offering of flowers. A peck of darkness on the surface of earth. From the sky, the earth yields to the offering. The clouds shroud the sun for two cycles of spring. Waves swathe the ocean on full moon nights. The fractured world keeps wondering, where is the light? Of the dawn, silence, a secret conspiracy, somewhere beyond, the shadows of the night converse in hushed tones. But then, something stirs the earth's core. The familiar melody, the chirping birds. The gushing rivers, the sensations it no longer felt, fill the gifted pause. Standing in the balcony, 
I open the soft lids of my eyes and inhale the vernal spring. Standing in the balcony, I open the soft lids of my eyes that withheld the sun for long. The clouds part the sky, a prelude to the unfolding dawn. The potted jasmine rises from its meditative sleep and bathes in resilient pearls. I inhale the vernal fragrance as I step into my home. The fragrance lingers in my routine, ensuring the continuity of spring. Ik asha, ik nai kiran, aur kratageta ki subha ka maine ik deep chalaya, aur vasant ke khilte phool arpan kare. A hope, renewal, and as I light a dia of gratitude and offer flowers of return to a world I longed for. Thank you and dhanevad. Thank you, Alka. While your poem is on resurgence, I must say it's so romantic. And the Wordsmith Award is definitely well-deserved. Thank you. <laughs> because, you know, the conspiracy you did, it certainly managed to tickle all our senses. And I felt that I am in somewhere nature enjoying the smell of Mogra with my loved ones. So what went into spinning such a beautiful poetry? You know, uh, it took me seconds to write it. Uh, like most of us have been uh, reflecting during pandemic, uh, but I did not meditate. And like all of us, we were, I was going through fragile times. So somewhere the seed for this resurgence was sowed way back. And as the seed matured, maybe it was time for it to bloom. And Absolutely. the birds just flowed. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you very much. One more time, Thank guys. You Thank you. Thank, Thank you. And now it's time to introduce our next set of poets from Sanrakshan, a social change movement. I would like to invite Jyoti Tiwari, who is one of our poetry sister and has graciously taken up the role to introduce the work of Sanrakshan here. Jyoti, a big round of applause to her. She's a great poet, but she's not reading the poetry this time. So the work of introducing Sanrakshan was given to her. Namaste. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it gives me an immense pleasure to talk about Sanrakshan, my team here. Sanrakshan once existed as a social change organization has done enormous work in Asian region towards safeguarding children from sexual abuse. Until 2019, it had reached out to 500,000 children and adolescents worldwide. Sanrakshan also advocated women's rights and their safeguarding from sexual assault and domestic violence. Sanrakshan mentorship program Drive to Passion mentored women towards achieving their dreams and career in Singapore. Sanrakshan's work with children and refugees has been featured on various prestigious platforms from TEDx to the bus stops of Singapore. Sanrakshan and its sister organization, Faith Foundation, also holds the Guinness Book of World Record for conducting the largest child safeguarding session of the world in 2017. We believe that the true rising happens when we rise together. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.
Thank you, Jyoti, for your presence and help. Truly representing the spirit of Singapore, Sanrakshin Poet Group is a melting brewing pot of women from diverse culture and heritage, standing together in solidarity and creating poetries from past five years. It's time to invite our first poet from Sanrakshin, Tan Zihua. Zihua experiences life, land, and love keenly. She hopes that her person, personal touches enrich a moment, some person, and the spirit. She's a spatial designer who designs, who writes the poetry on the whim. It is cathartic and therapeutic, so she encourages all of us to try it. Let's welcome this beautiful human being whose introduction is also like a poetry, Zihua. Good evening, everyone. Today I'm going to share with you a poetry that um, I struggle with as a person. So the first one is called Turning Sick. There was a time I sputtered and struggled in the face of rebel, whining, kicking and grumbling, but it rarely moves a rubble. As I age, I learned to manage the emotions which lead I started too to change myself to meet what others need. Sometimes though I lose my cool and my silence can't be feigned. My soul cannot be oppressed, not unless it's slain. Dormant she stays, quietly observing, surviving on little nourishment, pining for the day she can be revived to meet the Creator's hope. There came a time I became meek, powerless as a lamb, shamefully grown but defeated. My soul has lost its way. What should I do or what could we do to restore what has died, to recover precious lives? Wrinkled lines we carve around us, we see no end in this infectious pus. Stick a hand through, Feel the air, grab some help from those who care. So the next one is less gloomy. <laughs> Thank you. It's all right, we can tolerate gloom. <laughs> all right, it's called Let's Grow for All. It is kind of a continuation to what I'm going through. And anyone that goes through with this can feel it together. All that energy we spend each day this terrible affliction to grind, no one seems to mind, you know, if your world does not shine. The question is, can you live like this in the current state you are? Most of us can't for human strife, so we keep looking far. Presently, our shared world spins, webs of expectations gain. We adapt into very tough, Tense, nuts, enduring loss and pains. When we walk the murky path, we look dearly to succeed. What now when goals unmet? Will we cry for feet? Exploding now and smash things up like one who lost the head, surging through with ills and wrath, breaking hearts with wrath. Or would we rather strength and grace to commune in a better place? In tandem, we grow past pressured pains and cheer for those who gain. So yes, let's grow, for it's the only way. Just know that we are not alone. People die and born and be reborn. We aren't here for long. Strive hard for future's sake, but don't keep trying to prove. We evolve into better beings if we are all ready to groove. That's all. Thank you. Stay. Stay. Z, stay. <laughs> Thank you, Z, for your poetic brilliance. I always get awestruck with your poems. Thank Thanks you. for advocating the importance of flow, acceptance, and surrender. I hope you guys are taking notes. Our poets are giving such beautiful tips about how to research. I mean, I have taken. So how is it that you are able to create such beautiful poetries, sometimes coming, as you said, of dark and murky spaces? 
I would say that my friends around me, people that are strong, weak, all kinds of people, they actually bring us up together. And without them, I don't think we can actually get through life so easily. Absolutely. We rise when we rise together, right? That's, That's right. the true rising. Yes. Thank you so much, Si. Thank you. Next up from Sanrakshan is Vanessa Jacqueline De Cruz. She's a poet, motivational writer, and speaker. She has written 106 poems, co-authored two books, and have done 80 motivational videos. She's a freelance event organizer and a social activist for LGBT rights. Thanks, Vanessa, for making this place, this, pla th this world a better place with your continuous effort towards inclusion and harmony. Let's give Vanessa a big round of applause. Thank you, Fanny, for this awesome introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Vanessa, and I want to thank Vani, Eric, who is not here, and the Poetry Festival of Singapore for inviting me to perform my, my poem recital. One. My poem is actually dedicated to all the poets around the world, especially to my sisters, Tapasia, Richa, and Sonia, my 50 poetry sisters who I collaborated to write an anthology book of poems entitled Ataman. It is sold on Amazon, remember Amazon, huh? And for those who have been supporting me throughout my journey, I have chosen this sari, very beautiful, right? Because it reminds me of the rising sun the resurgence of life, the phoenix that rises from the burning ashes. So in short, my poem is also dedicated to those who are suffering out in the world and trying to find the resurgence of life, courage and strength to become who they are. So with no further ado, allow me to recite my poem entitled The Resurgence of Life. The flag is on, unknown spectrum of time, blinded to the reality of time. Why are we blinded? Well, it is the pain that we feel, but ignore it, we do. However, only the heart knows, so do not lie to it. The speak of pain and resurgence, who hears them? Only the conscious of being knows the conscious, for that is you. Cry you must, shout you must. Walk on the road of resurgence to a destination unknown. Heart knows, but speak it does not. The whisper of nothingness. Only the cool wind you feel. You wonder why you're on the flight. You feel dreamy. The world closes on you. The pain of life you feel. But rise from the pain of your soul. You must. You are reading. You are reaching an unknown destination. Fear rises from your body. You feel a resurgence of anxiety and depression. Something you don't want, yet stuck with it. You rise from your bed, a dream to a destination unknown it was. A resurgence of fear it was, as it is Groundhog Day. You fear the day, you fear the resurgence of fear, you fear the resurgence of depression. Fight you must, as your heart wants a resurgence of life. Life is a game. Run the risk, run the love. Take the, leap of, take the leap of faith. For the resurgence of life is on the other side of the mountain. For the resurgence of life, of strength, is for you to find. And for the resurgence of life, is also for you to take. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
run the risk, run the love, run the leap of faith. Thank you, Vanessa, for affirming the importance of love and leap of faith in order to research. And my question to you is that despite being it so tough, how do you research again and again? And how do you manage to spin all this into your poetry? It's very simple. This poetry is actually, or I would say this poem is actually about my life, of who I've become, who I fought for, and the difficulties that I've faced, but still able to reach the goals that I want to reach for. So writing this poem actually, like some of you said, it takes a few seconds to write. But to bring out the feeling of this poem, it took me a very long time to think about how to write it and to showcase to you about my life, to showcase to the world that they can do whatever they want to do and help them to find the strength and courage to live their lives. Thank you for opening your life and encouraging all of us towards the resurgence. Thanks, Vanessa. Thank you. All right, next up, poet from Sanrakshan is Preet Pal. Preet is a committed mother, an entrepreneur, and a perfect homemaker. She loves to write poetry since childhood and continued to write throughout the different phases of her life as woman. Being a philosophical writer, she loves to pen down the nuances of human psychology, a feminine voice whose poetry always touches often the unseen spaces of a woman's psyche. Let's welcome Preet Pao. Thank you, Vani. Hello, friends. A very good evening to all of you. My name is Preet Pao. <laughs> Would like to thank Vani, uh, Eric and PFS for uh, inviting me here for my poetry. I am doing this since last six years. Right. Today my poem is on resurgence, resurgence to live to the fullest at different stages and ages of life. A reminder of youth to the older self. Let's start. Standing in front of the mirror. Standing in front of the mirror, I see a very familiar face. The face so similar, but not the same. The eyes, the honey colored eyes. Once bright with pride of youth, had thousands of desires, alluring, mysterious, mesmerizing and intense, now watery and fatigued, bent like a broken bow, with lots of experience and truth to bestow, bestow. flowing, flowing dusky, shiny, lustrous hair, kissing the waist with every move, dense like dark clouds, now shining, silver thread in gray, throwing light of knowledge, gathered on the way. The touch of the skin, the touch of the skin reminds me of the softness and supple feel of petals, sun-kissed, with the glow of shining afternoon, freshness of a budding flower, smoothness of velvet, smoothness of velvet, faded with years of hard work, chiseled with time, creased with vellum, telling stories of breaking and making with a hearty smile, smile. Smile that look, took the heart of many, sugary, plumbed and full, the kiss that whispers like enchantress. Ones who fell for it cannot be revived again. Still, the smile is so pleasant like an angel, vivacious and captivating scintillating with years of knowledge, knowing smile is all you need, for smile is the language of love. Thank you. Thank you, Ari. Stay. All seduction poets know that I'm going to ask questions and they run away with. <laughs> anyway, Preet, uh, after listening to your poem, I realize how most of us women have been guilty as charged for having these silent conversations with mirror, mirror on the wall. But you have been a very brave, as well as a very seductive poet, bringing in the seductive part of a woman's psyche. 
So what goes into this mind while writing these poems? Hmm. I just imagine myself beautiful seductress and enchantress you know because I think back in the back of the mind of everyone I think men also think the same they also want to charm everybody you know they should they should because we are positive about when we are positive about ourselves we think like that so I am positive about myself that's why I write like that amazing <laughs> thank amazing. you amazing another you. notable <laughs> moment thank you preet all right are you guys ready for some melody yes no okay fine so next poet is also a melodious singer her name is aslivia kin migrated to singapore around 17 years ago she was a teacher in indonesia and malaysia and now works as a librarian in primary school and does community work she loves to write poems since secondary school she and her youngest son has set up a poetic band named musically poetry where they combine poems songs and music together she has also published a book a house made of white clay along with her son along with her son her community action project has also been awarded by dress to success international currently she is helping a school in hinterland area in indonesia and i just want to personally add that the house made of clay she has raised money from that to help a cancer survivor so please join your hands together to welcome this very beautiful heart slivia with a musical brain all practiced after 4 years huh yeah yeah first of all oh yeah i forget my face mask She always help me. I love her so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First of all, uh, I would like to thanks to Poetry Festival Singapore for inviting me, especially um, Shilpa, Vani, and Eric. Um, this is uh, this year is the fourth year for me. Um, my poem Unseen is about sacred soul. It was about the magical experience that I experienced in the past. I hope. Uh, for a resurgence in my energy because it is important to keep it healthy and out of disturbance especially when the times got very hard like last year <clears throat> unseen by stevia kid Because the people you hate are scattered. You think you're great because we groan in pain. The cold is knowing you. You found your sacred soul against divine nature. Follow your desire. love happily but your empty soul has no master you're afraid aren't you afraid when it's time to come back can you make it cover up aren't you afraid when your time comes can your soul be forgiven before it's far Apologize to those you hurt before it's far too late. It is clear that he is the only one in heart. 
don't admire wrong or follow the wrong command. Slow down with no sound. Don't trample the weak. Bow down and you will find as you know what you see. You will have to take the responsibility because he is the Almighty. Before it's all too late, aren't you afraid? Before it's far too late, for you to come back before it. It's far too late Aren't you afraid Before it's far too late For you to come back Before it's far too late You will have You will have to take You found your sacred What a musical treat it was. I feel so proud watching you growing from strength to strength as a poet. But why are you getting up? Shouldn't we have the musical part played one more time and all of us clap for her? Yes, please, Slivia, one more time, the last part. Yes, once more. <laughs> okay, um, I think this poem has some magical experience. Uh, through the COVID-19 and all the, um, you know, the difficulties, the hard things that we have to experience in the past because of the COVID. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Before it's far too late, aren't you afraid? Before it's far too late. For you to come back before it's far too late You will have to take You found your sacred soul Before it's far too late Aren't you afraid before it's far too late You will have to take before it's far too late You will have to take you found your second soul. Thank you for connecting us all to the sacred peace of our soul. So, no question for me? <laughs> no, I think you've done enough. <laughs> I made you. Thank you so much. You so much. I made you sit here and read it again. All right, so the last word tonight is yours truly. I'm not going to introduce myself. You have seen a little bit of me in every poet from Sanrakshan who has recited their poem here. My poem is called Genesis. A little bit of background. In last festivals, I have been reading poems from the dark spaces about being broken open and the metamorphosis. But when a creature crawls out of the cocoon, it needs to take a journey to embrace her essence. And my poem is about that, which is with Preet. Thank you. <laughs> the vessel scrubbed clean, her karmic loans paid off. In this newfound emptiness, broken open and metamorphosed, awestruck with her own feminine, wandering in the corridors of a mystical ruin, speaking to the ghouls of courtesans of God, tapping her feet to the rhythm of primitive anklet, 
shattering the maya of the world and dancing through the smoke screens of illusion, dissolving in her own wisdom, Sharda she becomes. In the ancient Himalayas, amidst the wilderness, quiet night, fireflies, and giant deodars, she emerges from the sacred river, luminous, washing away her needs of seeking permission, protection, and provision, standing in her own being, where each intention becomes manifestation, celebrating her own genesis, mannat she becomes. Melting in the sunset of Bali, as he wrapped his wings around her soul, she dared to stitch her dreamy desires with the gleaming threads of rainbow. Eager hearts on her windows and door. In each love story, she loved her more, standing in her sacred, untethered core, the enchantress, the temptress, Aphrodite she becomes. As she strolled through the wood in the Sundarban, witnessing a tigress mothering her cub, roaming in the darkness, basking in the sun, she casts away the expectation of others of wearing the crown of Mrs. Best Mother. And now she feeds her inner child. She guards herself as she nurtures the wild and let them grow on their own term as she becomes the divine fulcrum, intertwining within and without as protector and provider in, in her sprout. Gaia she becomes. Summoned by a wise old woman sitting on the grassland of Savannah, giving her the hidden wisdom. Seek your essence, um, embrace it. Your feminine, your masculine, your everything in between. Universe anoints you, the goddess and the god, breaking the paralyzed matrix of desiring respect and fearing disgrace. Ardhanarishwar, she becomes. Once a broken open, once a butterfly, how do we define her now? How do we identify? Is she a wife or a daughter? Is she a mother or a lover? Is she a pretty face plastered on the glossy cover? No, she's not. She has freed herself from the stigmatized, rigidified, crystallized definitions of the world. Even in her loneliness, she's enough. They can be her moon and back, but she's the sun. Fire, water, wind, earth and sky. In her, all these five elements metabolize. Pregnant forever with all possibilities, Mary she becomes. Thank you. And I need my script back. All right, so with this, we have come to the end of this beautiful, poetic and musical evening. Thank you everyone for making it memorable. My special thanks to Jyoti, Alka, Zihua for doing the volunteer work and making it possible. Big thanks to Eric Wales and the organizers of Poetry Festival. I would also like to thank Lazal for giving us this exquisite venue and then the National Art Council and Kino Kunia Bookstore for making today's evening possible. And in the end, I would like to thank you all audience members for holding this sacred space in which our poets were able to recite their masterpiece with authenticity. Hope to see you all next year and have a lovely evening, everybody. We do have some great books which we would like to give our poets. We can do it later. And yes, let's hope to see each other next year at Poetry Festival. And till then, resurgence of the Divine Feminine. Thank you very much.